this is embarrassing. I had a whole routine. I was doing my skincare here and then got to the bathroom to do my makeup and noticed that there was something on my mouth. And I was like, no, please don't let it be noticeable in the video clips. And it was so noticeable in the video clips. So now I'm just gonna kind of like recreate the magic. I know, boo. So I'm going on a hour and a half, maybe two hours max flight to Atlanta to surprise my older sister for her birthday, yay. But I wanted to quickly talk about skincare and being on a plane because a lot of us probably haven't been on a plane in a while because of the panini press. <laughs> um, but you know, there's some things to know. I feel like sometimes people get a little too carried away with skincare on the plane and then some people don't get carried away enough. Two things to take into consideration with your skin when you're going to be on a plane, hydration, because it can get really dry in there, and protection with your sunscreen, because if you thought you was getting UV down here, you were getting UV <laughs> when you get up there in the plane. So hydration and sunscreen, definitely the two main things to um, consider. Also now, because we are in a parallelogram, we also have to wear masks throughout the flight. So there's also the mask me. So we're gonna talk about all of that, but let me show you what I did with my skin this morning, uh, well, this afternoon. So I have oily skin and I, it's mild weather here in New York and I'm going to slightly warmer temperatures in, in Atlanta. It's maybe 10 degrees warmer in Atlanta. So not a huge difference, but when you're flying, you do want to take into consideration what the climate and the weather is going to be doing um, at your destination because that's going to affect the type of skincare and you know makeup, if you wear makeup, um, that you're going to pack for your trip, right? So this morning I just did... <laughs> this morning, I cleansed my face with this um, La Roche-Posay Lipicar Wash. Technically, now you can use this on your body and your face. Technically, it's for dry skin, but who's gonna check me, boo? <laughs> but I wanted to try something that was, you know, not going to, you know, be conducive to drying my skin out. Although I'm only gonna be on a plane for an hour and a half, but that, you know, that could still do a little bit of damage. I got this in PR. Um, I, I like the texture. It doesn't feel like really heavy. So if you have dry skin, it might be something to check out. Or if you have oily skin and it's like cold and dry where you are, that might be something to check out. But for today, it was just kind of like a, eh, they sent this, in, they, they sent this to me in PR. Let me try it real quick. Um, I also did this Cosrx Hydrium Watery Toner. I don't use a hydrating toner in my routine regularly because I just don't need one. Once upon a time, I did get curious and I was like, well, let me see what these toners are talking about. Even though I knew full and well, like, girl, you don't need no damn hydrating toner. Um, one thing I hate about hydrating toners, a lot of them on the market are really expensive um, or they have so much fragrance in it. Not that I have an irritation to fragrance. My nose just doesn't like a lot of things, you know what I mean? But this one was a good compromise because I think this was like 20 bucks or maybe just under 20 bucks. Um, th th there's no strong fragrance in it that my nose can't take. And it actually does a good job of hydrating. Not something that I need regularly, but since I'm going on a plane, I figured, let me put a little bit of gas. <laughs> hydrating toner on. So then I did my hyper skin, my vitamin C. I like to wear that. Uh, vitamin C as well as other antioxidants are great for fighting environmental damage, UV, free radicals, you know, that sort of thing. That coupled with your sunscreen and we'll, we'll talk sunscreen in a minute. And I put on my uh, Kiehl's spot treatment. So I put this on after the uh, hyper skin vitamin C just on the spots, I dabbed it on the spots where I have dark spots. You can either spot treat like how I did or you can put it all over your face if you want to. My eye cream is this Olay Bright Eyes Eye Brightening Eye Cream. Uh, while my face is oily, underneath my eyes can be a little bit dry. So I do like to use um, a separate eye cream. And in this case, it made sense for me because like, although this is obviously a moisturizer, um, you know, this felt like it gave me a little bit more for it underneath my eyes, you know what I mean? And that's a good case for using an eye cream because like I want something light and hydrating for my face, but I could use a little more underneath my eyes. So for me, that's good to have an eye cream. Um, and then of course, after that, I went in with the Kiehl's um, Ultra Facial Oil-Free <laughs> Gel Cream. Really great texture, look at that texture. It's very hydrating, but very lightweight. So it's like perfect for oily skin, especially in a situation like I'm in now, I'm going on a, a plane and then I'm going into a climate that's similar to where I am now, but maybe a little bit warmer. So that's really good. And then I did my, another fave, Kose Sun Cut UV Perfect Milk 
SPF 50 plus. There's a video on this with my, my full review. Now I wanted to talk about a couple of things that I didn't use, but that might be um, beneficial to you. If you're someone with dry skin or you have dehydrated skin, now you can have dehydrated skin and you can be dehydrated and still have oily skin or you know obviously you can have dry skin and be dehydrated you want to make sure that you're hydrating in each step um so you may want to consider a hydrating serum these are both from peter thomas roth i'll link them below um this one i haven't had a chance to try much um i got well but i got both of them in pr this one i haven't had a chance to try much but i do like the texture and it does um, feel really nice on the skin this one i've had more time with um, you, you could, if you have oily skin, you might be able to get away with using this as like a, you know, just your hydrator and then you just put your sunscreen. Um, but I do think like in a plain environment, you might want to put a moisturizer on top of it. Um, other things to talk about. So I mentioned that hydration and protecting yourself from the sun were super important when you get on a plane. And these are things that you want to do before you even get on the plane. I think by the time you get on the plane, you try to do all of this, it's, it's a little too late. If you're on a long haul flight, you still want to have your sun, your um, your skincare routine done before you get on the flight, and then at maybe some midway point, you do may want to do a full routine in the bathroom, you know, and hydrate and put something inclusive on top so that that hydration doesn't get sucked in from the airplane. Um, but. Another thing that we have to worry about are these masks because we have to wear the masks on a plane. And even for people who aren't particularly acne prone, you can have issues with um, the mask rubbing up against your skin. It causes a condition called acne mechanica. The friction from the mask is rubbing up against your skin and causing you to break out. So you do your regular skincare routine. One thing you might want to include is when you're doing your cleanser, you might want to do um, something that's going to help to prevent acne. Um, Inculus has one, a salicylic acid cleanser. I'm not quite sure how much salicylic acid is in this. Um, it doesn't say on the packaging, um, but I'll link it below in case maybe they disclose it on their site and you want to check it out. Or you can even ask them because they have an Ask Inky thing. Um, I like this one though. It's very gentle and it's inexpensive. And they, I think, I don't know if it was limited edition, but I remember them seeing them coming out with a bigger bottle. Um, but I also like Murad's acne cleanser. It's 0.5% salicylic acid. I think that's like, that was really great, especially when I was going through uh, my bout with adult acne that was just the gift that kept on giving. It just kept coming back and coming back and coming back and coming back. And I talked about that in a video, so you can check that out. Um, recently, I've tried this Dr. Zenovia 10% um, benzoyl peroxide acne cleanser. Now, usually anything that's like benzoyl peroxide, I'm like chill because benzoyl peroxide is good that girl good for the acne but that girl also good at drying out your skin so you want to make sure that you're you know really careful with it but um this one is a very gentle cleanser um and since it's a rinse off and it's not staying on the skin it's not going to dry you it didn't dry me out it's not to say that it's not going to dry you out everybody that's different you know that right anyway but <laughs> i like this one as well i had something like feeling like a bump like which is like forming on, on my chin and that night i cleansed my skin with this and by the morning um she was gone so those are things to consider to add to your routine if you are getting maskne or if you're trying to you know that time of the month is coming and you know that you know you might be susceptible to some breakouts those are things that you can do um also there's the polish choice two percent bha i have it in the bathroom don't feel like getting up to get it so i'll pop it on the screen that's another good one um bliss spa has a uh two percent salicylic acid um toner type of thing similar to the Paula's Choice one um similar in that they have the same active ingredient I don't know if it's like you know but if you're looking for something that's less expensive than the Paula's Choice you know maybe go that route acne spot treatments that I like recently the inky succinic acid acne treatment um the active ingredient here is salicylic acid I like this for um you know like sometimes you get like the random uh, breakouts. I would not like say that this is going to be the be all end all cure if you've got cystic acne or more aggressive, um, severe acne. Um, but random, you know, once in a while breakouts, you know, this, this might be your partner in crime. Um, when I have, I get cystic acne very, I, I seldom get cystic acne, but when I get it, I get it. And it's usually like big, it's either like on my nose, like on the middle of my forehead or something. It's always just like, I'm here. 
For that, I like to use the Neutrogena Stubborn Acne um, Treatment. It's got benzoyl peroxide in it, and that kind of helps to subside it, along with, you know, icing it. That's a trick that I learned from the um, acne expert, which, by the way, if you do have more severe ongoing cystic acne, definitely check out that series because um, I've got some videos with her on what you can do to treat your skin, as well as things that you should look out for, like ingredients, foods, you know, so on and so forth, if you have acne prone skin, so check that out. Now, another thing that you may want to, I wouldn't even say may, you probably would strongly need to consider this if you're gonna be wearing the mask for, um, let's say more than three or four hours, which if you're on a long haul flight, you probably will obviously be wearing your mask for that long, is to get some Aquaphor, plain Aquaphor treatment, or you can do plain Vaseline, plain Vaseline, no cocoa butter, no variations, plain regular regular Vaseline petroleum jelly. Now what you're gonna do is you're gonna put this, or do your regular skincare routine, put your sunscreen on, do all of that, um, and then you're gonna put this on the areas where your mask tends to like hit your skin. So maybe the straps, maybe the nose area, maybe underneath here where the, you know, the mask is kind of like opened up and it's like um, creating friction here. You put a thin layer and what that's gonna do is help to kind of prevent the mask from um, rubbing up against your skin because the mask rubbing up against your skin causes something called acne mechanica. Um, and even if you're not acne prone, that can happen to you if you're wearing the mask for prolonged periods of time. I'm not saying that you to do this every single time you wear the mask, because I don't, cause, but I don't wear my mask for prolonged periods of time, but it, it can be extremely helpful if you are. Um, and it's not gonna it's not gonna break out your skin, but for more on like mask acne and wearing masks when you have makeup on and all that other stuff, I have a video on that, so check that out. Now, I hope I have recreated that and I hope I didn't forget anything. Hopefully if I have enough time, I'll show you what um, skincare I packed. If I don't have enough time before I leave, this is gonna be a vlog anyway. I'll, sh I'll show it to you when I get to Atlanta. This is a long ass walk. Flight time will be one hour and 50 minutes. Welcome aboard. My bad for this weird angle, but um, you know, obviously there's no mountain here and I didn't bring mine. Um, the flight wasn't bad. I'm so glad I got a first class seat though, because um, you know, sometimes you know sometimes you gotta tuck your anxiety in. I'm not scared of flying per se, but um if you watch my Ghana vlogs, and this is like 2019, end of 2019, beginning of 2020, um when I was going, I was so anxious, like on the verge of like tears. This is the Peter Thomas Roth uh, mineral 
powder um, thing, which I'm going to apply in the mirror. Because when I try to use the phone to apply it, I mess it up. <laughs> I don't blend it in good, like you saw in my reapplication video. Anyway, I'm super glad that I did first class because I had, you know, the space. I didn't have somebody on top of me because they're not, they're no longer blocking out the middle seats. And what else? It was just nice. I, I they, you know, they didn't give enough food. You know, they, they weren't, pa you know, the flight attendants weren't passing out food. Like, you know, when you fly first class, when you first get on, they're like, madam, may I please offer you a beverage? Like, they didn't do that until the allotted time when they, they come out with the drink carts and stuff like that, which obviously makes sense because they're not going to want you to be constantly opening your mouth to drink and eat and all that other stuff with, you know, COVID going on. But not bad at all. Right now, I am in a little ass car. <laughs> <laughs> um, I rented something full size, but they're some of these businesses got to do a little better. But <laughs> I rented a car with dollar rental and did a full size. Even signed up for like their express or rewards or whatever it's called because, like, you know, that kind of stuff matters sometimes. Like when you book direct, I used to book on like a lot of those like third party sites before, but now I just book direct with the people because I feel like you get a little bit more. You know, leeway. You might pay a little bit more, but you get a little bit more leeway and, you know, finessing that you can do with your reservation. Anyway, so I got my car. The guy said to, you know, stand over on the side. Somebody would call me um, to get my car. But then I noticed that when people were being called, like they were cheering. So I was like, wait, hold up. What's going on here? So <laughs> I said to the, to the people next to me, I'm like, wait, hold up. How long y'all been waiting for your car and it was like almost two hours and I was like oh no 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 like I will cancel my car and get an, in an uber because I got to go I can't be sitting up in here for an hour two hours on this hard bench with, with the way my back is set up no I cannot do that um so I went up and talked to the people and I was like yo what can we do because I need to surprise my sister you know I need to get there at a certain time you know I'm a little hungry and a little <laughs> you know a little little, little aggy because you know i had this mask on for a long time and you know i would like to get into a place where i could take it off and breathe um so i was like what kind of cars do you have available so she's like um you know i'm gonna have to put you in something smaller and i was like i mean it's either that or i sit here for an hour or two i really don't care <laughs> so here i am in this little car um, and when I tell you this is a little car, this is a little car. I'm five foot nine. I feel like I had to bend down <laughs> so much to get in here. But anyway, I am going to go surprise my sister. I don't know if I can get that footage on camera, but I need to text my niece and see what's what. So I'm so excited. I have not seen my family in almost two years. So, you know, I talked to my sister and my, and my niece and my nephews on FaceTime. Uh, my sister, I talk to her on FaceTime like almost every other day, but you know, it's different when, you know, can't wait. Ah! Oh, a little family backstory. I'm the youngest of five. Two of those are my half sisters. Cause you know, daddy. <laughs> Papa was a rolling stone. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> I'm the youngest. This is my oldest sister with you know we, we you know mom and dad are the same but my oldest oldest sister is an amazing woman named dawn um who no i did get to see her i got to see her i can't remember if that was this year or if it was late 2020 but i did get to see dawn and dawn um has uh daughters donna and diane who are my nieces but we're all around the same age. So I'm 39. My nieces are probably 37. Well, one probably just turned 38, actually. And the other one is probably like 36. I can't keep track of like the years and stuff, but um, we're like mad close in age. And we used to hang out and go to the clubs and stuff in our 20s and whatnot. Um, they're, they have, they're, they grown with kids and stuff. Um, and, you know, me, I'm a, I'm a little bit different. But anyway, let me go and surprise her. So they'll give me a credit, right? Uh, no, that's, yeah, I see what you're saying. Yeah. But you're gonna talk to them when you come back. When I come back? Them. Yeah. Okay. Because I'm gonna raise hell if they don't. They 
Because they didn't even say that it was it was like a wait or anything like that. They just said sit to the side, and then I happened to ask the people next to me, and they were like, "We've been here for two hours." Yeah, actually, uh, you can talk to the manager when you come back. Yeah. They should, but you know, it's not my discretion. Okay. All right. All right. How many youths is in here? <laughs> she didn't see what? She didn't see what? Um, but why they got me in? It's it's the, it's not your birthday. They got me. Let me show y'all what they got me. <laughs> they got me across the street <laughs> from Magic City. <laughs> yeah, I ain't trying to be disrespectful, but uh, oh shit. <laughs> it's a it's a little. They were doing a photo shoot. In one of the um, studios over here. <laughs> and now we're getting up out of here. <laughs> Listen, it is like I'm so not used to seeing so many people without masks on. It's as if they're like, like COVID. <laughs> what pandemic? <laughs> now in New York, I'm starting to see, you know, in the beginning and in the middle, everybody was masked up. But I guess people got, you know, like mask fatigue. So every now and again, I see people without masks on. And then there's that um, CDC guideline, like if you're fully vaccinated, there's like places where you don't have to wear a mask um, if you're outside or something. I don't know, I actually don't know because I'm fully vaccinated, <laughs> but I still be like, <laughs> <laughs> listen, man, if there's something I really super don't want, it's COVID. Um, I have asthma and I mm -mm, don't want any smoke with that. I don't want to, oh, it's just the, mm, 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 mm. nope. <laughs> Cause walking to my car can trigger my asthma. Wait, we got to sing. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Wait, I was the only one singing. Happy birthday. I want y'all to know that y'all sound Pathetic! Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, for object permanence. Okay. What? What, what is object oh, permanence? That's Christmas. Easy, <laughs> 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 Um. Okay. 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 So I give her this one or this one? Oh, you're a good sir. Excuse me. This sounded like a beat. No, okay. I don't have 10, Carla. Two, three, four, five, <laughs> six, seven, eight, nine. Oh, I do have 10. Okay. okay do yeah. I have 10? You have 10 cards, Chris? Mm -hmm. He's like, make sure it gets to a me. <laughs> <laughs> you want to put the whole camera on him. Get the earring. He says the whole camera. Get the earring. So I'm supposed to pick two more? Pick two more. Get the earring. <laughs> get my bling bling. This is like my old school love. <laughs> <laughs> like watch how many likes this about to get. <laughs> Wait, read the card, the, the black card first. Daddy, why is mommy crying? Oh God. Um, <laughs> my my collection of Jeff. <laughs> what? My, my my collection of Jeffies. <laughs> <laughs> Crumbs all over. He's nervous. Crumb, crumbs all over the goddamn carpet. He's stressed. Everybody in? Yep. Yeah. All right. Shuffle up the cards. Shuffle up the cards and me come on top. The one on us Uh oh. What if I have a The Department of Sexual Tension. Who are you people? <laughs> <laughs> when I'm in prison, I will create the department of my genitals. <laughs> 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 Yo, 
When I am president, I will create the Department of Natural Male Enhancement. <laughs> when I am president, I will create the Department of Interaction. <laughs> <laughs> Why are they all like Who would want that? To make you all right. Like when I'm president, I will create the Department of Powerful Thighs. <laughs> wow. These are so diverse. <laughs> I'm gonna have to go with the direction that last So I'm, I'm, I'm in the closet, you know, whatever. But I wanted to tell y'all about two things really quickly. So um, someone had asked me something about sunscreen sticks. Sunscreen sticks are a great option because um, this one in particular is from Neutrogena. It's 1.5 ounces. Um, this is good to travel with because I don't think that it's, you know, it's going to melt very easily. But I've also not tested if it melts very easily. But in theory... I would say that this is probably something that's, um, you know, kind of good to like throw in your bag to reapply throughout the day. Um, great to travel. Like take you can take this on board with you and not have to worry. Um, I do know in certain countries, though, certain things are considered like I know when you go through the London Heathrow Airport, they also count gels like the, your lip gloss. But that was years ago that I've been in London. I don't know if things have changed since then. Um, but, you know, just, you know, obviously check the uh security guidelines and all that before you fly um but this is really easy it looks like deodorant right only issue though when you use something like this is that you know obviously you gotta <laughs> blend it in now i had a sunscreen spray but i wound up not taking it with me because um and, and now i realize i could have taken the spray with me because it you know obviously it was a smaller size but I couldn't remember if I had to show my liquids or not with pre-check and it turns out I didn't. So I really could have just brought the spray um, because this takes a minute. <laughs> like if you're gonna put this um, all over your body, it's gonna take a minute to kind of like really rub it in. So I would say that this is probably really good. I mean, if you don't mind doing all of that, obviously, you know, it's a winner. Chicken dinner, winner, winner, chicken dinner. Uh, but I would say that uh, this might be good to keep for like touch-ups throughout the day. And the Neutrogena Beach Defense has this really nice fragrance in it that I love. Oh my God. I don't even know how to describe it. Anyway, we are off to brunch. I'm going to put on these here bracelets. And then we are going to, you know, put the wig on. Because we are braided down. <laughs> I'm, so I'm cracking up at how Gabby just braided my hair down like three or four days ago and I already got the fuzzies because I'm basically five years old. Give y'all a little OOTD. Pants and top from Aerie. I saw this on Living Fearless um, on her vlog and I was like, oh, I need to get that. But you gotta tuck the shirt in because otherwise it's mad boxy. Because this is not given but then this is given actually I would even do like this like tuck it in and then just do like that kind of moment that's kind of cute too we gotta pop that collar <laughs> with my shoes wait for it though we are going for brunch. Hey, let me hold your hand, little girl. That's fine. The decor in here is super cute. Look at these gold chairs. We'd love to see it. This is absolutely beautiful. OMG. Look at everyone with their phones. <laughs> They're like, wow. They're like, wow, I've never seen a cake like that. Me yeah. neither. Look at it. Look at that architecture of that cake. Look at the creativity, the artistry. Are those macarons? What do you want? Wow. Did she make the macarons by hand? <laughs> I believe so. she does. Wow. The only thing that's not edible on there are the flowers. I'm glad you said that because, you know. Yeah? Hey. 
to more life. Happiness. To another half century, yo. <laughs> <laughs> sister in the world who is probably secretly my mom <laughs> love you Dion uh, love you to, to the sister who will drop everything that she is doing to come get you yes. including her kids she don't play with her kids That's right. here he is Ooh, so first coming on the waffle battered lollipop all right now, do we have like another floor? This is beautiful. You know what Jasmine, what's the girl who, the lady who makes these cakes? The cake and company. The cake and company? Oh, okay. Y'all hear that? The cake and company. Yeah, Atlanta. Atlanta. Yes, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> so I um, am clearly back. I don't know if it's clear that I'm back in New York. I don't know if you can see like the difference, but I am back in New York. I uh, flew back in very, very late. Well, or you could say very, very early this morning. My flight was delayed because it was like a whole lot of rain. There was some tornado watches in Atlanta. So my flight was delayed a bit. Um, and then I forgot to vlog. <laughs> I think maybe the last thing I remember picking up the camera for was I think maybe the brunch that we had at um, Rocksteady, which is a Haitian American um, restaurant in, I don't know what part of Atlanta that was, but it, I'll, the name and whatnot will be in the description box so you can you know, figure out where that is. But that food was pretty good since we had a big party there was a bit of a wave. We had a party of nine, so there was a bit of a wave, but they set us up in this really beautiful room. So while we were waiting, we went across the street to, um, shoot, I forget the name of the restaurant, but I'll put it up here. Brand new, just opened up. The people that worked there were so sweet. Um, it's like a uh, crab boil kind of place. I'm, I'm not the hugest crab uh, boil, broil? I'm not the biggest crab fan, but we went there to drink and then maybe try to pre-eat but they had some situation where they only had steam things available. So, you know, <laughs> that would have taken too long. And, you know, plus we were getting ready to eat at the other place anyway. So we just drank there. Um, the drink was good. I had something that had like pina colada and something else mixed in it, like Hennessy, um, vodka and rum. Oh my God, I only had one. I'm not much of a drinker, but we had an amazing time. My sister looked extremely happy. You know, that's of course was the whole plan from the get. Um, I, I, I just feel like a proud auntie because I'm just so like proud of how grown up my niece and nephews are. Now, the funny thing is, you know, when they were born, I was still a kid. <laughs> so we were like kids together. So, um, but there is a significant age gap. Like I'm about 11 years older than my nephew, 13 years older than my niece. And um, my youngest nephew, that's definitely a, <laughs> a significant age gap. I, I think he was born when I was in college. So I was probably either like 20 or 21 when he was born. Um, but, <laughs> but just like watching them, the people there around, because a lot of the other people that you saw were like their um, friends or like their significant others. And just to see like, because you know, like you're a reflection of the company you keep and I ain't gonna lie, they used to hang around with some funky people and I was just like, mm, you sure about that? <laughs> but this group that they're around now and they're all like like extended friends, that was really great to see. And just, you can just put a tear in my eye to see the growth, to see the growth <laughs> of my 
niece and nephews. Um, my youngest nephew is graduating from high school. I don't know if I can make another trip, another trip to Atlanta um, for that because initially they only gave a few tickets and everything else was virtual, but they have since opened it up. So I don't know if I'm gonna make that trip or not because <laughs> I just don't know. Also, when it came to like my skincare routine for going home on the plane, it was like non-existent because the flight was so late, I still had my makeup on. So then the most important thing was like when I got home to kind of, you know, obviously remove my makeup, I double cleansed. And I didn't do much. All I did was put on my Olay Retinol 24 Max Moisturizer, which I used the last, very, very last itty bitty bitty drop that was left in there. So I think um, for nighttime, and we'll talk about this more in the future, that I'm going to um, scale up on the Tretinoin. Before I was just kind of using it for some pores that were on my cheeks as per my dermatologist, but I think I'm going to, you know, with Tretinoin, you just need the smallest amount. So I'm gonna, um, probably scale up to using that all over. Uh, definitely not every night. I'll, you know, still kind of pace myself with that. Um, you might have noticed that I have on the same blazer as I had on yesterday. Like, no shame in my game. <laughs> it's not dirty, you know, it's, 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 still, it's still fresh. So we're good to go. I'm actually on my way to see Dr. Michelle. Um, I'm getting a peel under my eyes. You know, we still got a little bit of the discoloration down there, so we're, we're um, tending to that. Um, I think she has me trying another peel for my face, but I, I, I might have misunderstood her. I'll find out when I get there whether the peel that she's talking about is for my eye or for all over my face. Um, I don't necessarily need a peel all over my face, but when I can, I do like to try certain treatments so that, you know, for my own personal like experience, and then as well as to show you guys, because that's what this channel is all about. Um, but you know, that's going to be in a separate video. So as soon as I hang up, <laughs> as soon as I hang up with y'all here, I'm going to start that other video. So make sure you have your notifications turned on and you are subscribed to this channel so that you don't miss when that comes up as well as some other amazing videos. We've got some great lineups coming up on this channel. We have more people coming up with the hyperpigmentation series. If you're interested in that series, definitely make sure you check out the description box because I'll put information on how to contact me. I would have loved, I would love to have at least two of you guys a month come on the channel and talk about how you cleared your dark spots or if you have melasma, how you're treating that. Um, and if any of you have rosacea that you're treating, I should also include that in there because that's a condition that I, that of course black skin and you know, skin of color in general do experience, but I don't think it's talked about as often. So if you have rosacea and you're dealing with that as well, definitely check it out. Or hypopigmentation. Some people have been asking about that. So rosacea, hypopigmentation, hyperpigmentation. I'll leave that in the description box. So anyway, folks, thanks for hanging out. Leave me a comment below. How do you like these vlogs where I kind of in integrate skincare and stuff? Because I feel like you know, that, that's how I gotta get y'all to watch them. <laughs> like, 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 you know, I gotta, the, the skincare brings you in, but the personality makes you stay. You know what I mean? Hopefully. <laughs> I'll see you guys in my next one. Bye, guys.